default. Will the United States default on its debt obligations? Is our country so divided that they can't come up with something? And even if they do, will we embarrass ourselves to make it so that when we go to issue new debt, right? Remember, we're at the debt ceiling. So when they go to issue all this new debt, is anyone going to take it? I'm your host, Bill Noble. We're going to figure this out today with my co-host, Toby. Toby, welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. So we're going to talk. Let's talk the energetic landscape around the United States, our debt, the political divisiveness. I mean, is there is there a place that resonates for a beginning, right? As people just sort of like, there's a lot of fear. Fear. Yeah. A lot of fear. Yeah. Um, so I think paying attention to fear is always a really good indicator that um, somebody's probably trying to manipulate us somehow, right? Okay. So we have to look at what are they trying to make us do, right? Or what are they making us afraid of? And then realize that probably the opposite is true. No, that's how I look at things it, energetically um, to see. So why don't you tell me? All right. So, you know, I'm not a big news person. Right. <laughs> right. I don't so, pay attention a lot to the daily news because well, I, mean, I don't like, like living in those fear cycles. Right. So tell me, I mean, I've heard about the debt ceiling. I kind of understand what it is. But tell me what you feel the energy like that the government has around it and that people have about with the fear, you know, what what's going on in the, in that. Okay, so good question. So in 2011, it was very, when we had this problem last time, mm -hmm. it was very much about, you know, side A negotiating with side B for what them and their party wanted. Mm -hmm. Okay, this time around we're hearing almost none of that. Mm -hmm. right? What we're hearing is, you know, I want to push the debt ceiling or I want to default to make you look bad. Democrat versus Republican, this may be like the, this could be the ultimate culmination of all this like intense divisiveness mm -hmm. where basically there's, there's no incentive to work together. This is one thing that Dalio was talking about. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, they actually may just let this go so they can point fingers at each other. True. Right. So uh, there's, I, go ahead. No. So there's there on one hand, there's fear. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, there's complacency in markets because I don't know that they're taking the divisiveness seriously enough. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do we care? What do we care about? Is the fear warranted, mm -hmm. right? What's, you know, what's the sense of the situation? Because there's kind of like the fear now, mm -hmm. but there's also some denial about what could happen after the event. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there was a tiny bit of a, a political element around the last time this came around. It just wasn't as big. It looks like, from what you're saying, it, that it feels more entrenched. Like, are, are you saying that the fear of people in the markets is um, that it could destroy everything if they just let it go and they go into default? Is is that what the fear right. is for in the markets? Or well, I, I think it's actually the fear with the person who runs the Federal Reserve and the Treasury. Okay. Right. So they're, the, you know, Powell said, you don't want to live in a world where the U.S. can't pay its bills. Yeah, I think they said that the last time we had a problem with the debt ceiling. And that's what, uh, I mean, interestingly enough, part of the zeitgeist of of the United States is that we're upright and we pay our bills, right? So coming close to default for a lot of people looks really bad. So the the other side that's allowing us to go into into default, what's their energy like around that? Well, I think the the energy is just outright hatred for each other. I, honestly, I, I think it's like I want to go into default so I can blame you, okay. and I'm just sensing that there's an acerbic nature to it. Mm -hmm. And even though Powell and the Fed and the Treasury have said all this before, I actually think they're the ones who are most afraid of this like ugly civil war-like divisiveness mm -hmm. coming up to the surface, mm -hmm. right? Frequently markets are assuming it's gonna get done because it's unthinkable. Th yeah, and so that's an interesting point too because I definitely feel that that's what the, the, the market is thinking. Um, what did Ray Dalio believes based on what that, that they'll let it go into default? 
Well, I mean, I'm a big admirer of Ray Dalio. Right. I think Dalio's point is that we're so divided, right? That's where I'm getting it from. Okay. We're, we're so divided that there's somehow an incentive some way for it, for them to let it go, right? Mm. There, there's like a, you know, there's this underlying rancor that nobody wants to admit exists, mm. okay, because of how scary it is. And then, of course, there's this idea that, you know, I think part of what Dalio may be saying is that, you know, if this turns into an embarrassing situation, whether they get it done or not, this could have implications for how people treat our debt. Because like I said, we have to issue a lot of debt quickly throughout this year. Yeah. One third of our $31 trillion has to be effectively refinanced over the next 12 months, mm -hmm. right? And then there's gonna be a big push to fill up the treasury coffers in the short term, okay. right? So it's almost like, you know, the fear, you know, can beget, you know, anxiety and hatred Right, and then at the end, what kind of byproduct does that leave us? Reputational damage, a bond market that doesn't function, mm -hmm. right? Where you can't buy or sell evenly. Mm -hmm. Like these problems are, are out there. Okay. So it's almost like a, a person who's out doing something that hurts their health in oh, a way, okay. right? You know, we're out there, we're doing something that hurts the health of our bond market, okay. right? And then, you know, are, are we just gonna get a boo-boo and get a Band-Aid or are we going to the hospital or are we going to have more of like permanent damage? Are we going to have a, a mark from this that stays with us, right, as in the United States? So, you know, what what is the health of the United States as it surrounds debt and reputation? Does that make okay. sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's pull some cards. Yeah, let's, let's do see. it. Let's see what the cards say. I mean, I, I have a... An internal feeling but I feel like this is kind of three questions so I want you to ask the first question which you, you asked me before which was um, will they go into default right right and so we'll, we'll start with that pile right there Pull okay the and see what happens oh, oh this is very good so the card um, suggests that uh, we're holding on to money this is actually the, the card of um, check yourself. You might be too miserly, right? Okay. Um, so we have to look where the greed and the miserliness energy is coming from. And then is that good or bad? So the, the, there's this feeling of holding on, holding on to what we have. So how does that interpret for you with the, your market? Model? Well, I, I, I'm sure there's people, like obviously the people inside the Treasury and the Fed, the people who have to do the process of issuance, mm -hmm. they want our reputation intact. Yeah, okay. this is more than reputation. This is not a question about reputation. It's about money. This is a question about holding on to the physical reality objects, right? The, I mean, if you look in the card, he's, right. he's clutching the coin to his chest, not releasing a flow of money. So. There is that. It's not really about reputation. Well, that's a question maybe we can ask later on. This is about flow of money, right? And right. there's something that's holding, keeping that flow of money restricted. Well, I mean, that's the debt ceiling in general. And of course, the government's only got about $57 billion less. So maybe this has to do with the government having to prioritize what money they hold on to and what money they pay out in the meantime, mm -hmm. which in English would be kind of pointing towards a half-assed solution to this, which not a lot of people have talked about, right? Like, a, Okay, so a, what would that, that solution look like for you? I mean, what do you imagine they would do? If, the, if this was the mindset, right? That right. They, that they want to hold on, hold on, hold on, restrict flow. This is about restricting flow, which right. is a little bit about interest rates, right? I mean, isn't that what Well, they want to, yeah, they want to restrict bond issuance, okay. you know. So that looks like that's kind of where we're going. What else would that look like? Well, they, they might, <laughs> this is funny, they, they might make certain payments and not others. Mm -hmm. So maybe they would make a debt payment, but people wouldn't get social security checks, mm. right? Something like that. In other words, if they hold on, if it, the energy is holding on, mm -hmm. right? It's almost like they want to hold on to not just the money, mm -hmm. but the debate around the money. Mm, right. So keep that conflict going. Keep right, the conflict going. Let's pull another card on that and see what it said. Oh yeah, there's lots of nightmares that are keeping 
people awake every night. So there's tons and tons of fear around this as well. Um, and the, the beautiful thing is, this is one of the most challenging cards in the whole entire deck, but the beautiful thing, the, the energy around this card, right, is because it's sword energy, which is mental energy, it's really the fear. Like, so, so this holding on, this restriction or, around money is also making them and probably the public, you know, very, very afraid. But it is, in a way, imaginary. It is, a, it, it's not that the things that are happening aren't real. It's imaginary in that you allow this fear to build it up into something even bigger than it is. I right? see. So, yeah, so how does that read? Well, the, you know, the, the fear is with the Fed. So, for example, people have been waiting for six months for the Federal Reserve to say, we're going to stop hiking interest rates. Mm -hmm. You would have thought that when they made that announcement, there would have been a parade, like, yay, they're pausing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they made the announcement, right? They, they demonstrated their fear over all this, like we don't want to make any more waves. Mm -hmm. And really there was no pomp or circumstance. You know, there was no celebration of the pause. Do you think that that's um, because there's still a lack of trust? Perhaps is that why people are like thinking, oh yeah, you say that now, but then you know three months down the road you're going to raise them again. Is there a lack of credibility or something that's causing people not? Well, to th there, there's a debate as to whether or not they're going to continue after the pause. I yeah. mean, when I heard that, I was like, you know, he's forced to realize the gravity of the situation. Mm -hmm. In other words, if this goes badly, mm -hmm. right? Or if it just goes the way it's supposed to go, where we have to just borrow a ton of money, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> After we've made an ass out of ourselves, he can't do anything to make it worse. Okay. So the people who aren't sleeping at night are the people in the Treasury, the people at the Fed. And honestly, I'm losing sleep about it because, you know, Dalio has war warned against complacency about this. Mm -hmm. Just sort of assuming it'll go away, okay. right? So I, I actually think the smarter money is got a little bit more of a fearful edge to this than say Joe Public. Okay, all right, that's interesting. One more card on this question. One more. Let's see. Oh, we have the Queen of Swords. That that's an excellent card. So um, when you get the Kings and the Queens, the Queen is of course a little bit milder example of the Swords, but a lot of that um, revolves around um, contract. Disputes, uh, legal matters. Um, so, to me, what this signifies is that somehow this will all work itself out. The the swords, the the logical mind will overcome um, the problem. It doesn't mean that there aren't going to be some long term ramifications, but this specific problem with the debt ceiling will be resolved. Okay, so that could mean two things. What, mm -hmm. Obviously, no default, right? And then there's yeah, also something exactly. legal where, you know, the debt ceiling is just like this imaginary line, yes. right? And then maybe it's just time to get rid of the imaginary line so we don't have this circus. Live in fear all the time. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And then, you know, who knows? That that may be after there's reputational damage. You know, you don't know. Like Potentially. They, I know you talk about the reputational damage and... Um, that's a, that's an interesting thing, and uh, that's another thing that we can ask a question about too, um, because uh, I don't know. It 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 I mean, it looks like it'll be resolved. It could be a hybrid thing. I'm not feeling a lot of fear and urgency around it. I think there is some stuff coming up, right? Right. That that, that is coming up, but I don't think this it's is this? this. No, this doesn't look like a. It doesn't feel like a big trigger. I'm, I'm not pulling cards to see that it's a big trigger, right? Okay. Um, but that doesn't mean that something else isn't coming. I just don't think this is it. This could be like a small red flag. You know, like if you're dating somebody and they say something weird on the first date and you're like, well, maybe that was just a mistake or maybe, right? But, but when the drama comes later, when they're screaming and throwing things at you, you know, then you're like, oh, I remember <laughs> well, when we first went yeah. on the date, right? Uh -oh. <laughs> so it's kind of like a little bit like that. It's like a, a it's red flag. It's like a flag. small red flag. Uh, but it, it looks, it feels very much like a red flag, um, but not the true issue, which is which is interesting. It's just like, oh, there's an imbalance here. And it sort of reminds me, I know you, you talk a lot about um, the, 
the, the thing around money and everything, you know, of course, I love, I love crypto, early adopter, believe in all of it as a technology and, and as a system. Um, but the, I do think that this is this little red flag around what does money mean to us? Okay. What, do, what does money mean to us? What does security mean to us? There's so much going on. I mean, this is one red flag. Then we have the AI stuff, too. This is another, I don't know if you'd call it a red flag, but it, but it's definitely a, you know, a, a wake-up call. For, like, we need to reimagine what does work look like, right? Right. Um, what does money look like, you know? What, what do our lives look like? What, what does everything mean? I mean, it's like... A, existential crisis in a way for the whole world but I think especially strong for the US because of who we've been for so many years you know I think this idea of us and I know Dalio's talked about it too I went to one of his lectures talking about the change of you know the rise of China and India and these other countries coming into dominance and um, the importance of the US going away how long that takes who knows? But but he did speak of the precipice of this, and I, I believe this is a tiny taste of it. And when you talk about the reputational damage, and I said, "Well, let's do that as an right. additional question." Right, because crypto people are super interested in that. Well, right? like, that's really good. Yeah. So because the shift of, of the energy around the dollar is super super interesting. So, right. Because a lot more Americans, like Americans, now know who the chairman of the Federal Reserve is. Mm -hmm. His popularity rating is low. Yeah. Which. That's not amazing, but what's amazing is they even know who he is. Right. Right. And then right. there's all these articles about, you know, how countries are not using the dollar anymore for Absolutely. transactions. And even though that has been an institutional research for years. Yes. Okay. It's now everywhere. So the public is asking themselves, hey, you know, what is this currency that I'm holding? Obviously, there have been bank failures. And frankly, if you wrap this all around the crypto environment right now, Crypto probably should have gone lower, right? Crypto should have mm -hmm. looked at all this fear in risky assets mm -hmm. and been like, oh my God, and that didn't happen. Yeah, I think we did a it, card it, pull it, on that, right? Right, where, where we did. It was, it, like the, I think, uh, I don't remember, it's so, so hard for me, you probably remember more than me, because um, I do so many, but the, but there is a little bit lower point coming, if I remember, we were looking at time, right? right. And it was, September? Right. Well, we, we, we talked about July and we talked about September as okay. a low point, right? Okay. So, I mean, this fits in with the debt ceiling thing or the reputational thing around the debt is the beginning of something weird, not the end of it. Yes. Right. Yeah. And that's and the, kind of why people... Oh, go ahead. No, that's why people don't seem to want to let go of their crypto yeah. now. And, and it's... I, I, I think that's a really good idea. I mean, I don't think you should, which is why, you know, and I know sometimes you can be a little negative about the meme coins, but I do think you're right in that um, it's a it's a bit of a distraction and a bit of fun. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, it, to me, it's it, it's an art. But um, but I think we talked about this, that we're going through this whole um, cycle that'll end sometime in next January and February. Um, but we didn't see from the reading a lot of big dips with Bitcoin. Uh, we did see some with Ethereum, if I remember, right? Right. I mean, so like all some... coins in general, right? You know, mm -hmm. meme coins are a sense of adventure. Yeah. Right. People yeah. are like looking to invent something new. It, I know, love them. You know, she, <laughs> you're Toby's two for two. She got Pepe and Ben. So yeah. y'all out there can say what you want about Ben, but you know, I'm still curious about Milady. I'm, I'm, I'm I, right. You're still that looking... was that got an unusual card, and it felt like mm, maybe. I don't know. I might. I might go get some. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I usually don't play with little coins like this, but it's been fun, and I did get some right. So I'm like, oh, maybe I should pay attention. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, right. oh. She got, a, she got the crypto bug. She got the crypto bug. All right. So let's let's sum this up. Okay. So. Oh, did you want to? I think we should ask another question. We were talking about the okay. the a question around money. So do you have a question about that? Right. I yeah. think you know is. You know, is the integrity of the dollar, right? In other words, are, are we at the precipice for the dollar, right? And if we are, right, like what kind of world does that create, mm, right? That's a In big words, question. But, but let's talk about the energy around the money and what it's going to do and possibly how that will affect us, you know, at least in the short 
changing. I mean, talking about a world changing, and I do think we're at that point, right? Right. We're talking about a world changing moment. It's a, it's a long process, you know. Okay. So we'll look later on, but let's go ahead and do that on this pile. We'll do oh a lot of movement. Um, so we get the the eight of wands, and usually that's a message: move quick, move quick. Things are changing very very rapidly. So I would expect there to be a very rapid change. It doesn't say negative or positive, obviously, right. but um, this idea, the, the question you had again was? Well, it's about the, the integrity of the dollar, the integrity of fiat, particularly after this debt crisis okay. thing happens, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, one so of the things- So it's changing that's, really it's, rapidly is what the card is saying. Okay, but it doesn't it, say good or bad. Let's look, we'll pull a okay. different one. Let's pull a new card. Oh yeah, but the devil card, I love that card. That's the card of addiction. That's like, what are we addicted to? Are we addicted to the idea of the dollar without recognizing its true nature? That would be very much in line with the devil card. Um, what are we holding on to because we're afraid, right? Right. What can't we let go of because our fear keeps us back? So how would you see that? In well, I mean, the dollar is considered the world's reserve currency, right? Mainly mm -hmm. because it's used to buy commodities, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, you could also, uh, there's a flip side, right? Like, if people have trouble borrowing dollars, right, in the lending market, sometimes they have to go to the foreign exchange market and actually buy them, mm -hmm. as counterintuitive as that sounds. Yeah, right? yeah. Everybody gets down on the dollar, Right, but then all of a sudden, when people need them, because people do need them still, mm -hmm. right? Just because the media writes an article that the dollar is doomed doesn't mean the mechanics of the modern world stop. Yeah. So, when you talk about rapid changes, mm -hmm. okay, you could have a rapid change where people are after the dollar because they can't get it, they can't mm -hmm. borrow it, so they have to buy it, mm -hmm. okay? Or there's this idea that, you know, the dollar gives out, right? That people just go, you know, and the foreign exchange markets are a fast moving and B can operate outside economics. Like they can just go, you know what? This is no good. Or we don't like the government or we don't like how this is being done. Sell, mm. right? You know, the legacy fiat foreign exchange market can do both. Okay. Now, if it's the devil, right? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, if, if there's a devil and the dollar, it's probably our dependence and sense of security. That's right? absolutely if, if, it. If, yeah. the, if the devil was going to show up for the dollar, mm -hmm. it would be the common man going, oh my God, mm -hmm. right? In other words, you talked about the debt ceiling thing being the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like maybe there's a debt, dollar, stocks, panic that maybe unfolds over a period of months. Well, this is definitely more of a crisis situation because we're getting a major arcana that's the devil card. And the devil card... Um, doesn't necessarily mean they'll change, but it's telling you, what do you need to change? Where are you addicted? What can you, what do you believe you can't let go of, right? So that speaks to what you were right. talking about right there. Um, so that would definitely be a big crisis moment for, for people. So probably, you know, we can um, pull a timing card if you want to look at a time for that. You okay, that? Yep, yeah, sure, let's pull. pull. Okay, I'll, you're going to need to bring up the little chart for me. Okay. The, the one that's um, on your phone, the chart. Oh, the chart. Yeah. Okay, so we I don't can... have that right now. Oh, you don't. Okay. okay. All right. Well, huh, phase two. <laughs> All right. Stay tuned for a future episode on timing. That'll be the next <laughs> yeah, actually, episode. Yeah, actually, let's do the timing. Yeah, yeah. We're, um, we're gonna... So I'm feeling three to six months-ish. Without the timing chart, I can't, I can't tell. But let's look at an outcome for that situation. Oh, truce. Yeah. Uh, following your heart. Okay. And um, sometimes the Two of Cups, um, it, it's not really a truce. Um, it's about, it, it doesn't show in this, but in the more traditional, a little bit more traditional um, deck, it, it, it has two meanings. You know, one, following your true heart heart and passion, right? Right. And the other thing is making a choice between something. So in other decks, it actually has a, a, a dude making a decision between two women, right? Okay. So it's a card about making a decision about, do I 
do I chase after the shiny object or do I go for you know wifey material <laughs> okay. that's kind of how it shows up on the on the card it, it's not in in this it's about uh the the union and the blending of the two uh, feminine and masculine energies but it still carries both of those things and it asks you um, what choice are you making is it a true choice or is are you going after the shiny object right so i i think for i think for the american public the true choice is whether or not to sort of embrace crypto, right? Whether they're going to need to, mm -hmm. right? In other words, a lot of people say, and you've heard this, right? Like, I don't get into crypto because it scares me. Yeah, volatility. Right? You know, they they have to they have to go from oh my god, this is scary, to oh my god, I need this. Okay. Okay. And then you know things like the shiny object. This could also be an intra crypto thing, right? Where mm -hmm. people have to make a decision. And a lot of people have talked about this for like the next six months. You know, are you going Bitcoins? Are you going altcoins, right? A lot of people mm. are holding on to this idea. Like the meme coins are new. Yeah. Right? And that's top of mind. But there's yeah. also something where people are like, oh, what about the old coins from the altcoins from the last cycle? Mm. In other words, stuff that I own that's not going to, that's not, I'm waiting for it to come back. Okay. Right? So do you go for the new shiny objects or do you hang on to... Your old stuff, my inclination is something different, but of course we want to hear. Well, I think if we were, see, and this is why it's such an individual matter when it, when it comes to this, but I do believe there's going to be a crisis, right? Right. And, and this card then could indicate it becomes a crisis of consciousness. And is, this is where the question we're asking is around the dollar, not around, you know, um, crypto, right? Right. But the next question we can do around, uh, around crypto, but... Yeah, it's a bit of a crisis of, of consciousness that I think maybe strikes more at the individual, um, but definitely, I mean, we have a major arcana here. So this is going to be, you know, within the zeitgeist of, of the American public, if not the world, right? Right. And, and it becomes a, a crisis of consciousness, and this would be a big event. I'm thinking... It's like you, three to six months. It follows in line with our right. our timing for what's going on in the crypto. But speaking of crypto, because you transitioned to that right there, right. maybe we should you should ask a question around uh, crypto and right. see see what what that because you just asked a really good question. Do we go back to what you say the ones from the previous cycle? Right. Do we go back to the old coins from the previous cycle, right? Or do we embrace something totally new? Okay. Whether it's you know it's looking at Bitcoin in a different way or whether it's these meme coins, you know, that would be really funny if meme coins somehow became uh, like a blue chip mm -hmm. investment, right? And on these cards with this crisis of consciousness, it's something we haven't talked about. But, you know, if this debt ceiling thing is the first shoe, banks failing could be the next, right? You talked about it striking at the individual level, mm -hmm. right? If banks are going down or if there's a problem with banks, people have to become conscious of that and make new decisions. Right. Definitely, we're on this precipice that I feel is emerging over the next few years and all of these little threads. Because guys want to think it's over with the banks. You know, there's people who yeah. think it's over. Well, I, mm, you I know. mean, my, my gut is saying, no, this is going to go on for right. a while. It's definitely tied to this money crisis. So this is the big umbrella, and then underneath it are these little treats that are hanging there, and right. the bank failures are are part of them. So I think there will be continue to be these little um, crises of consciousness that, you know, will be coming um, in the future. But be back to the crypto question. Okay. Yeah, so what what's the question that you want to ask? And it, it can't be an either or, and it can't be a yes, no, but, but the question well, around the I, crypto I mean, is... you know, the question around crypto is that, is this the decoupling, right? Is this sort of mm. like, you know, does, does crypto get a makeover in a way? In other words, does crypto go from this like speculative gambling world mm -hmm. to something that has utility in terms of people's peace of mind, right? Oh, like peace of mind. Huh? Right. Does, does, crypto, does crypto transition in the minds of the world? Right? Okay. So the answer to that is just yes. So we can ask a little more. <laughs> so okay, all right, all right, all right. right? I mean, it, it, it's here. It's been here. It's, you know, and, and what you said, it, interestingly, I mean, 
you know, uh, it's a it's a tool, you know, that's supposed to re replace our dependency on government um, currency, and it, it's meant to, you know, be used to purchase. The fact that we're treating it like a gambling market is fun for a lot of people. I don't really pay much attention to it, right? It's up, it's down. It's, it doesn't matter to me, right? Okay. Um, um, because I think, you know, it's, its original intention was to be used as, a, you know, a debit card for like for your banking account. And, right. And people aren't really using it that way, which is fine. Go ahead. All right. So but, let's but try. It's the way it'll evolve. But I think there's a there's a better question here that you asked about the two different um, types of investments because we're going to focus really short term on from now maybe till the end of the year. When you ask a question that's a little bit wide open like that okay you know who knows i mean it's it's a long time but the movement is already in that direction so yes it will somehow go that way but i think what what the beautiful thing that you can do with the with the cards is focus on where the energy is now and how it's likely to evolve in the near future right okay so is it moving more towards bitcoin or more towards the wider crypto market aka altcoins Okay. Right. In other words, everyone out there is going, is my altcoin going to make it? Mm. Right. So, you know, yeah, it's a, as as legacy shifts, uh -huh. right, you know, will will crypto also shift towards Bitcoin or towards, I don't know, they call it Web3. That's a nice way to refer to altcoins. OK. Right. Does that does that sound like a better question? Probably. I mean, the, the, the energy around it. I'm just saying I'm just saying we don't want to go into something really big and long term. So yeah, let's let's look what the cards say here. So the first card, ooh, the Emperor. Um, so that's a bit of a legacy card, right? Okay. So the Emperor is um, solid. It's a little more traditional, right? Um, so if you're talking about crypto, that would probably be, you know, the the more established. Um, the bigger coins, your coins. Bitcoin, your Ethereum. Yeah. And you know, and it feels that way too from a psychological standpoint to me. Um, that one of the things I feel like you know, maybe it's just me, but we want more people to embrace this technology. The more people come into it, the better, right? But when you have people like I know a lot of people who have never invested, they kind of want to, but they have all this fear around it, right? Because right. they don't think they understand it. I don't know why it's that much different from investing in a stock. That's how it feels to me, right? Okay. You're investing in a technology, right? Um, but uh, so those people will probably want to go into more stable, secure coins. But let's see maybe what it says for people who've weathered the market, <laughs> been around this for right, a while. Right, right, who've been through a couple cycles, yeah, right? Yeah, let's see if there's something else. Oh, there's some testing coming. Right, um, so this is a little bit of a friendly rivalry. Okay. So, how I would feel those two cards playing off each other would be that um, this is the up and comer. These are the unknowns or the less known cards, and but they're in a position of being on top. So for somebody who's comfortable with the market, knowing that all of these new people with the instability going on in the dollar, that a lot of new people might be coming in and sticking to the more, you know, the more established coins, that this is a good time for people to look at new stuff coming up okay. and play the little battle. It, it's going to be a little bit of a battle, but he does end up on top. Right. And that could be back to some like maybe AI coins and some themes inside markets, right? Certain sectors may do better than others in crypto, right? Sometimes crypto mm -hmm. rises altogether, but if Bitcoin is sort of sideways or if that becomes your mom or your dad's crypto, just in terms of, you know, that's yes. where the money goes. Yes. That's where the, the new money or I don't know, who knows, maybe it's the dumb money or the late money goes into crypto. Maybe there's a, a play somewhere else, right? Could be the AI coins, <laughs> it could be meme coins, who knows? Right. Well, I think then we can go back to the previous reading, and I'll I'll draw another card here too. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, you know, my investment strategy always is buy what you love, buy what you believe in, right? Because all markets are around belief and hope, all of them. You know, traditional markets as well as crypto markets are all about what a bunch of people believe, 
you know it's a lot of psychology there so if you like something you believe in it I mean I'm, I'm you know following what you say about the uh, the AI stuff I think it's a huge trend there's a lot of talk around it that would would push some that's something I'm looking into right but it's, it's funny there's a lot of talk Mm-hmm. But in terms of investment, people are still trying to figure out how to invest in it. Like well, they're buying. Well, that's good. So people like you, that's how you can make more money is telling people how to decide right. what projects are good to work on. And that's a really good, good area to go into. So anything that's top of mind and trendy like that, and, and we can't beat that. And this is the, the new wave. So if we have new coins, right, coming right. out that they should be attached to a new wave form of energy that's going up. And AI is like the biggest thing on top of mind now. So that's right. what so I'm a- looking at. Right, and yeah. AI coins are actually down. Like there was a huge well, mania, mm-hmm. right? And now it's almost like a, a value investing opportunity. And there's... I, I think so. I mean, that's, you know, I, that's what I think. Because I think, you know, um, there's so much fear in, in the market right now because of all of this instability, right? And so people are afraid to move. I know you've been saying, you say, I don't talk, pay attention to the market on a daily basis. You know, right. I've got other stuff. But, you, but you are a listener to the market up. Oh, right? absolutely. Right, right. Absolutely. I do. I All the time. So, um, but yeah, it, definitely the fear. We can go back to the card here. The things that keep people awake up at night. And so people are holding on to their money. This is not right. just about us. It's about every single individual now, now do you think that that can bridge over the bitcoin that people are like you know oh yeah holding absolutely, like, absolutely. Like, that's what know. i'm saying it's a it, you know this is an energy at work right so we were just looking how the energy is affecting the dollar but that same energy exists in the universe so obviously it's affecting everything right right it's affecting individual households you know the cost of living is going up people are holding you know there, there's a lot of fear among all the individuals and as a zeitgeist as collectively we all have this fear. So right. yes, this is this holding on thing is also happening. Right. A lot of people want to buy Bitcoin at twenty two thousand because they think it's gonna go lower. You know, I actually thought it should, but it's not. Right. And if something is supposed to go down and it doesn't, what's it gonna do? You know, it could turn around and go up, or it could just simply defy gravity, right? This sideways action could be, who knows, a floor underneath. It right. looks like a floor. And I, we did timing on that too. Right. There was a little bit of trickiness around Ethereum, but Bitcoin looks like energetically. Like it's pretty fucking stable going forward. Oh, I got you. It's, it's okay. That's all right. That's all right. Bleep. <laughs> that's all right. That's yeah, all right. So that's how it feels. Trying so to give we'll... it to people real. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so one more card on this. So we yeah. have three on it. And, and let's see. Oh, new. Yeah, it's you, you want to invest in the new money. It's page of Matt. Pentacles, a message about new. So new coins, new coins will be the wave and getting in now. Right. So here's the, here's an interesting thing about crypto, right? Mm-hmm. Um, people may be too worried about a range of things. Like maybe they're too worried about the debt ceiling thing, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of people think, oh, well, meme coins came out and that's the top. Right. Mm-hmm. Normally, you get some sort of speculative excess mm-hmm. at the top of a crypto move. Mm-hmm. And basically, what you're saying is that may not be true, mm-hmm. that the new stuff that comes out garners more attention. And the thing that's funny about people coming into the market, whether it's, you know, I don't know if it's Fidelity investors, but, you know, meme coins are actually easy for people to understand, mm-hmm. right? It's just a funny picture and it goes up. Mm-hmm. You don't have to understand the technology stack behind it and know what the software does. Mm-hmm. So, you it's know, like buying a video game. Right, it's a video <laughs> game, right? It's a, it's a game, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. And people love and that. And it's fun. And it, it you know, it's it's small. Um this I, I don't know that it's talking about the meme coins. We're actually talking about an expansion of the uh, of the currency market, right? Okay. In in other coins. So, not that meme coins can't become that. I mean, my feeling from the readings that we're doing and my personal opinion is that they're fun, like a video game. Let's do it. Let's play. You know. Right. Um, but but alternate forms of payment, alternate forms of investment, alternate forms of security, because the dollar is right. not it's looking shady. so good. So people, I don't. I mean, I think it's fun. You should go ahead and invest in meme coins because they're fun. But looking at alternate forms of secure investing, 
Oh, that's be, interesting. Is is really good it, around the we're speak specifically of the crypto market, but obviously the same energy. So goes maybe it's it. less about meme coins, and maybe there's uh, more investment and speculative opportunity in forms of payment like Litecoin, right? In other yeah. words, like Bit, Bitcoin has that that network has slowed down. They figured out a new implementation for technology called ordinals. I would say because the concern is not like the 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 energy around meme coins is about how can I make a quick buck? Really? You, right. I mean, it's fun. It's a right. video game. How, make a couple bucks, right? Um, whereas what we're getting in this reading from all of this market stuff is that an, an alternative to the dollar needs to be widely distributed and accepted, right? So I'm saying the more we have, you know, and if you want to look, look at the things that are new coming out now. That's the page of pentacles. It's like new things, new types of payment coin, not investment fund right, those right. kind of things, right? So possibly Monetary new system. stable coins or stuff that hasn't come out yet or old forms of crypto that have that, that, that like re, that reinvent themselves, right? Yeah. I'm just throwing Litecoin out as an example, but yeah. there's a lot of other things, you know, Ethereum, there's Solana, which can move very fast. Some people love yeah, it. Yeah, I'm kind hate. of excited about Solana. I'm, 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 I know. I'm, I'm looking at maybe expanding there. <laughs> so, right. Which is funny because a lot of people, you know, there are a lot of knocks on Solana, mm -hmm. but you've been, like, from an energy point of view, you've been kind of positive on that for a while, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think for me, you know, long term, looking at, this is, you know, a, as a replacement for the dollar, right? Because, which is why I got into it in the first place, right? Right. Um, looking at it from that standpoint, that is definitely what we need, right? Um, but but some issues come up in it, the ease of use is, is always, always a problem. There's a huge barrier. Little around security, we still get, you know, digital wallet blip stuff. Little bit. I don't pay that much attention to it. That doesn't seem that seems temporary, right? You know, a technological problem that can be, um, be solved. Uh, but uh, the energy usage of it is uh, is a lot. You know, the, right? The proof of stake versus proof yeah. of work. Yeah. So looking in those new that that solve these problems, I think that's where you want to go. And I do think, you know, diving into the AI stuff is really good because I I do believe that the AI will be able to help us solve some of these. I know there's problems. something something there's on the some show new yesterday. Yeah. There's something yeah. new yesterday from yeah. Bitcoin Miami yeah. that supposedly the AI will allow you to create your own coin. Well, the, this right. is It'll already possible. You. This is already re possible. Possible, yeah. Because I was looking into it a few years ago with a company I was building, right? So that's been a possibility. It's just going to get easier to do, and. Yes, this will be the interesting things, and perhaps that's the tie-in with the whole meme coin. The meme thing, coins right? was the beginning of people being able to basically create their own coin on a desktop, the way you can get ChatGPT to yes. write your homework as essay. Yeah, and I think that's you know I think that's really really fun. One of the things you know I I watched a talk and it was a couple of years ago. One of the interesting possibilities that I saw for. <coughs> is in creating community which of course the meme coins do right, right? but but in a more physical way too you know like uh, how it will change our idea of nation and boundary and when we're not I mean really our idea of country it looks like it has to do with land borders but it's nothing to do with land borders it's everything to do with the currency that we hold and share it is is actually the glue but that's a deep philosophical right that's deep and of maybe course, let's not go in there <laughs> right right and of course with nfts right like community you know mm -hmm. maybe in the future podcast episode we can get you know maybe nfts and then maybe we can get some more you know let's make a coin let's let's make a coin let's have toby <laughs> coin or no, 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 i don't want to name after me yeah uh, notorious we'll do a notorious coin. we'll do let's a notorious do coin yeah yeah all right now so, maybe people will be interested that we could do like a little tutorial because i want to learn how to do it too so let's get on chat gpt and figure it out yeah, yeah. all right so yeah. notorious coin so that's it for our podcast <laughs> this week we will see you soon